Hello guys, welcome to online web tutor presented by Proof of Sessions team. I am Sanjay. We are learning WordPress plugin development tutorial using Boilerplate. This is our part 9. Inside this video session guys, we are going to understand and use WPDB object in WordPress. In our last video, we had seen that how can we fix about duplicate menu label issue. So if I back to Chrome browser, now so far we have developed about plugin menu and sub menu so far. Now inside this video, we are going to discuss about completely a different topic from WordPress plugin development. This is all about we are going to discuss about WPDB object. This is a global object which is responsible to perform all types of database operation. Either we can perform insert operation, delete, update. Also, if you want to get all the data from table, so this is an object which is responsible for all the CRUD operations. So to understand clear about WPDB object, we have some document. So go to next tab. So here we have some basic idea about WPDB object and its class file. As we know that WordPress perform all operations via database. So for performing database operations, WordPress provides a class called WPDB, which is present in the file called WP includes. And inside this folder, we have a file called WP-DB.PHP. So if I back to folder structure, go at the root and inside this WP includes, we have a file called WPDB.PHP. So if I open this file, now inside this file, if I scroll down, so here is the class called WPDB. Back to document. So this class abstracts the database functions for WordPress and most WordPress functions directly or indirectly use this class. So from these lines, we can understand that if we want to perform any database operations, then we need to actually use the object of this class called WPDB. Now here, we can create an object of this class to perform database operations. So what basically this line means? This line means that if I open a new tab, so firstly, we need to load the class. After that, we can create our own object for this class. Let's say that it's let's say my object equal to new and here is the class called WPDB. So all we need to declare something like that. But WordPress by default provides a global object to use this class and this object is known as WPDB. So here we can create an object of this class to perform database operations. But WordPress creates an object of this class during the load of the WordPress. It means when we load WordPress right here then WordPress by default creates an object and load inside WordPress setup. So that's why we can call it a global object called WPDB. So by the help of this object actually we can perform all the database operations. We will see inside this video as well as upcoming videos inside this playlist. So the object is WPDB and it's a global object. So in case we want to perform any database operation, we should use this global object and call functions on them. We will see that what are the functions basically we use to get all the data, to insert any data, to delete, to update from this WPDB class. We will discuss inside this video as well as inside upcoming videos. So by the help of WPDB object, we can perform all types of operations like in CRUD, C stands for create, R stands for read, U stands for update and D stands for delete. All the TML operations we can perform by the help of this object and this is an object which is created by this class file which is stored inside this folder. So what is the basic syntax to use this global object? go to next tab let's say that we have a simple function and if we want to use the global object that wordpress provides up to, uh, for wpdb class so here we need to declare about 
global as a keyword and this is all about the object. So let's say global WPDB and by the help of this WPDB actually we can access all the functions what basically this class provides. We will see inside this video that what are the different different functions we have to get all the data to select all the data from the tables of our WordPress database. So inside the second slide of WPDB, this is the basic syntax to use about global object. So let's discuss about what are the methods basically this object provides to get all the data from our database tables. As we know that after installation of WordPress, by default it generates about number of tables equal to 12. Inside this table, we have we have various types of information actually inside this table is stored. So back to slide. Go to next tab. So if we want to get data from database, then we have several methods we have. So there are a lot of functions on WPDB to fetch values from the database. Some of these functions are specialized to get one value, one row, one column, or many results from the database table. So let's say that if we want to get a single value from our table, if I back to Chrome browser, open up call WP users table, and as we know that this table basically contains all the users what this WordPress setup contains. Now inside this WP users table, we have now right now only a single row. Let's say that we want only about the user email, only a single column value. So we can use this WPDB get var function. This is the function defined inside this class. So if I search for that, and here as we can see that this is the function. So by the help of this function, actually inside this function, we will pass our query and after taking the query, it will return about single scalar value. So let's see that how can we use this function and return a single value. Back to editor. Now this is the plugin so far we are currently working on. So let's say that if I go to our plugin, click on the menu and the message we are getting called welcome to plugin menu, copy and search here. So right here as you can see that here is the message we defined about book management plugin. So get rid of that for now. So let's say that we are going to use called get var function. Let's see that how can we use and get a single scalar value from our WP users table. So if I get rid of that, now the basic syntax to use about WPDB, first we need to declare and we are going to, let's say, we are going to get about user email value. So here, I am going to use called WPDB, get underscore var, and inside this, we need to pass our query, so let's say select, the column name we have, I think, user underscore email. So go here, let's say user underscore email from WP users table. If I check the table name, this is the table name we have. So WP users and if I write let's say user underscore email, save all these changes back here, reload this page. Now we are getting about admin at the gmail.com. So right now inside our table only we have a single column. If let's say we have multiple rows, so again back to editor. Let's say that here we need to put where condition where it equal to 1. Now this will give about only a single row and the id is something capital id. After getting this where condition it will return only a single user email. So this is the use of get var function. This function returns only a single value. Now let's say that we want about a single row. This time, we are not talking about only a single value, we are talking about single row. So this row basically contains all the values like user login, user pass, user nickname and so on. So 
if we want to get a row, a complete row, we have a method for that, something called get row. If I scroll down, so this method is useful to get a complete row from a query. This method takes in a query and also takes a parameter to indicate in which format the output should be. We will discuss about later on. Back to our code. If I make comment of this line, also make comment of this line because this is all about using gate fair and let's say user underscore data WPDB let's say get underscore row this is to get a complete row here we need to pass our query so select star from WP users where it equal to let's say one value now this will give about a single row detail so echo I'm to actually format our output so let's say print a and I'm going to provide call user data now save all these changes back here reload this page now here as we can see that we are getting a standard object inside this object we are getting all the values what basically this row contains. Now let's discuss about the second parameter actually we can pass inside this get row method. Now as we can see inside this output we have a standard object. Now is there any option to convert this standard object into an array format? Yes we have. By the help of the second parameter actually we can convert our output format. Back to slide. Let's say that if we pass array underscore a in the second parameter back to our code editor putting comma here passing it here it means array in associative format back to browser reload this page now we can see that this output is now converted into an array format instead of standard object values so inside the used method we have three options either we can pass object array associative and this is numerically indexed array so inside this video session guys we had discussed about some basic concept of wpdb object we had seen about wpdb class file as well as we had discussed two of methods called get where and get row inside next video we will discuss some more methods of this wpdb object so inside this video session guys, if you went out, then please drop your comment. I will give my reply as soon as possible. So for this video session guys, thank you for watching and have a great day.